Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Come on, if we've come here after work, we've got to try harder than that. Okay, for those of you who haven't been to Northwest Tester Gathering before, welcome, uh, one and all. Um, we don't ask for any subscriptions, any DNA. We don't want the soul of your firstborn. This is by the people, for the people. I know it's cheesy, but it's true. But we couldn't do it without the help of our spen uh, Spencers? sponsors. Sponsors who are spending. Uh, so tonight, all that lovely pizza and beer and soft drinks that you've devoured has uh, come from our lovely sponsors, Avecto. Uh, and in a come on, Avecto. <laughs> Uh, and in a moment, I'll, I'll ask uh, Claire Reckless. Where's Claire? I haven't met Claire. Hello, Claire. Oh, I know Claire. Of course I do. Uh, now I know your surname. Uh, I'll be asking Claire to come up and uh, give us a little bit of introduction about Avecto. Uh, but tonight, a uh, bit of a change from the usual. Some of you are more, uh, what am I saying? It's a room full of testers. <laughs> People who are more, more sharp and discerning will have noticed we changed the date slightly. And that was to accommodate uh, an old friend of mine, James Lindsay, who's in the Northwest. Uh, and J James was in the region. Uh, doing something else, which I'm sure you'll talk about. Uh, if you don't know about it, why don't you know about it? Uh, but James said he could do something for us, so we've kind of tried to work around James being in, being in the area at the same time. If we get time, after what James is going to do, I don't want to spoil the surprise, then we'll do some lightning talks, and if no one puts their hands up, I'll pick on Duncan again. <laughs> so, without further ado, uh, our sponsor, Claire, from Avecto, come and say a few words. So, my name's Claire Reckless, as Stuart said, and I work for Avecto as a tester. Um, I've been to a few of these events before and got a lot out of them, really enjoyed them. So, when the chance came up for us to sponsor, I was really keen to do that, and Avecto are really keen to get involved and get out into the testing community. For anyone who doesn't know who Avecto are, uh, we're a company, we, we create um, software that enables businesses to improve endpoint security um, without compromising user experiences. So, to, we, um, our customers can protect themselves against threats, Trojans, viruses, all sorts of things, obviously. It's been big in the news recently with the Talk Talk hack and Ashley Madison, things like that. So it's a really interesting place to be at the moment. Um, we've been around since about 2008, so we're quite a young company, um, but we've grown significantly in, in that time. And um, we're now recognised as one of the UK's fastest growing tech companies. We've um, just made it into the Sunday Times Tech Track 100. Um, last week we won an MEN Business of the Year award and winning a winning whole host of awards recently. So things are going pretty well for us. Um, because of with how much we've grown, we've got offices all over the world now. We're in Boston in the US, we're in Melbourne, Australia. We've just opened a new office in Frankfurt and our current UK office is um, we're currently off just off the A34 in Cheadle and in December we'll be moving to bigger premises just around the corner from our current location. Uh, in terms of QA, it's a pretty exciting place to be at the moment. Um, we've got our normal Windows solutions. We're also building products for Mac um, that's going to be released next year and also on Azure <coughs> services. So lots of variety in testing. Um, so really interesting. We're agile, we're automating. We're always looking for new ways to do things and try and do things better. Um, yes, we're recruiting at the moment. I suppose everyone who stands up here and does this kind of thing, yeah, we're recruiting lots of different roles in QA. Um, it's not really about the hard sell, but if you're interested, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter at Vecto, Vecto.com. Feel free to have a look and have a great evening. So, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Every week I stand up here and I, I thank the sponsors um, and I said at the start it's by the testers for the testers and all that's kind of cheesy but you know what every week I forget Phil thank you to Phil who comes and brings his own equipment and his own batteries that I use the most of uh, and films the event and then has to edit down all my wittering and then post it on the various social media sites so thanks Phil for doing that for us Uh, for those of you new, if you would like to sponsor or if you would like to do a talk, if you would like to share uh, some, uh, we're not allowed to call it war stories anymore, uh, experience reports with the group, then please feel free. Please don't speak to me though, I'm useless. Please speak to, speak to Clairbo at the back. She's our uh, coordinator, coordinator of herding cats. Uh, and she will deal with all of your varied and many queries. Uh, 
she'll also kill me if I don't say follow us on Twitter. Uh, and also, at some point, we will have the feedback box. Please feed the feedback box with feedback. Yeah, good. Anyway, okay. enough from me. Uh, here's our main speaker for the site. For, for the tonight. What is up with me tonight? <laughs> for the night, which is James Lindsay. <laughs> So I'm going to wear a blue thing. Um, I'm James. Uh, this is true. This isn't a presentation. I don't have slides. That bit has become a lie in the last couple of moments. Um, what I want to do today is to test. I know you've been to work. I know you've tested. I also know that you are testers, died in the world testers. You want to test, that's why you're here. You want to do testy things. Hands up if you're a recruiter, sorry. Hand, um, <laughs> has anybody here bought their own device? Do you have a phone? Do you, as in, not, not, not like mine, I've got a farmer's phone, you know, a smartphone thing with stuff, yeah? So we've got devices. Can we go there, nwtg.workroomprids.com? Laptops will help. Touchscreen devices should work. What I've got is I've got some stuff for us to test. And I'm hope, I hope that I'm going to facilitate the conversation around testing so that we can find out how each other has tested some stuff. Because I've spent the whole day talking about testing. Uh, who's in my workshop? Alexander's in my workshop, and Craig's in my workshop, and Dunk's in my workshop. So they've all heard too much of me. We're going to do some testing, but I hope we're going to talk about stuff ourselves. Let me move on to my one and only slide, because you're all moving on to go and get things. Have you got that web address in your heads? nwtg.workroomprids.com. <coughs> it's not working. We were guaranteed the Wi-Fi would work. Works fine. Big pardon? Looks like that. That's perfect. Good. Works on his machine. Everybody go over to Phil. Works on his. What are we doing? I've got a huge server with this on. So, well, look, before I go there, I'm just going to show you this picture because I need you to hold this picture in your minds. Can you hold this picture in your minds? Nice and easy. Hold that picture in your minds. I'll go back to this thing. So, that picture I just showed you is very, very old hat. It is diagram one of software testing. Sorry, diagram one of software engineering. In one circle, you've got things you might happen to expect from time to time. In the other circle, you've got things that were delivered to you. Now, let's not muck about. It's not a very good diagram because the things you expect change, and I expect different things from you, and our deliveries happen all the time, and we don't know where the edges of these two things are. But we try and bring those two circles closer together. That's what software and engineering is doing. And testing labors under the meme that we must work through our expectations. We must grab hold of the circle to whichever side is the right circle for you. We must grab hold of everything in this circle that is our expectations and work through it. And from time to time, we'll be in here where our expectations are covered by our deliverable. And sometime we'll be here where our expectations are not. And that's half the job. The other half of the job is over here. The other half of the job, you work through your deliverable. Finding out whether it meets your expectations. Why is that half the job? It's half the job because if you find something that you expect that's not there, it's a question of value. If you find something that is there that you did not expect, it's a question of risk. Do you as a tester want to know about risk as well as value? Oh God, I hope so. So, there are ways and means of working through a deliverable to find out exactly what it does. And to make that obvious, I made puzzles. Now, let me be clear, I hate puzzles. I'm no good at them. And people think that testing is all about puzzles. They're really not. But I've made puzzles. And I've made puzzles that have no solution. These things are doing something really clear, obvious, and simple. I've made five puzzles for you tonight. They're doing something so clear and obvious and simple that I can describe what they do in a couple of sentences. But when we explore them as human beings, we make things more complicated, more difficult. 
Now then, let us move back to this slide. No, I don't care. How many of you have got something working? Because it's going to be a very short talk if none of you are testing. <laughs> okay, we've got some people over there. Jem's got stuff. Phil's got stuff. There's a laptop! How many people didn't bring a laptop? Oh, this is how to get your hands up in your audience. Oh. Have we done this one? Hands up if you've got arms. <sighs> Manchester, really, full of armless people. Um, <coughs> If not, I'll do an improvisation workshop, and that'll be fun, more fun. Do you want that? Seriously. We can do an improvisation workshop. It's, it's a giggle. OK. Um, let's get some testing done. First off, puzzle 13. That's the first one on the list. I will show you what you should be able to see. Do we have, do we have this page? I'd like answers. Do we have this page? One, two, three. Yes. Excellent. Click there, please. Puzzle 13. I like that. That was better. I feel silly having to G you on a bit. All right. So, now, test this. What I'd like you to do is not only test it, but talk to the people around you about how you're testing and what you're testing and how you're doing. And this thing will be obvious very quickly. Let's play with puzzle 13. You've got I don't know how much time. You've got until people start to tell me what it does. Get testing. <laughs> How are we testing? We've got, oh, we've got lots of blobs. Do we know what's doing yet? Yeah, just about. Yeah? Cool. I might ask you about this soon. <laughs> and then how you tested it. Do we know what it's doing? Got You've got it. You've got it. Yeah, so but we don't know if it's supposed to do what it's supposed to do or not. Okay. No. No. It seems pretty clear. So that one, that one's fairly clear. That, one, that one's one, fairly clear. Which is that one's one. fairly. Clear. How are we doing with puzzle 13? Most of us know how it works. It does something that's so simple I can describe it in a couple of sentences. How are we doing with puzzle 13? People who test. So. Man at the back asked me, what's the purpose of Puzzle 13? It doesn't have a purpose. It's a very simple thing. It's doing a very, very simple thing. The purpose of Puzzle 13, <coughs> frankly, is to be a nice, soft open. It's an easy one. It's an easy one. Now, I don't know what's easy or hard until I write them and give them to people. And tonight, you've got new puzzles. At least one new puzzle. I don't know how easy or difficult that's going to be. And it's the <coughs> next one. Now then, what is puzzle 13 doing? Uh, so I had a hypothesis over here. These, these people, do, they were the first people to say, we know what it's doing, James. We know what it's doing. And they were confident. And then they couldn't decide who was going to tell me, because they all wanted to tell me so much. Am I right? No. No. <laughs> do, you, do you want to tell me, or shall I ask somebody else? Because I, I can. I can ask an all. Oh, OK. Um, <coughs> Who got Puzzle 13 just before I started to witter right now? Who got it a minute ago? Okay, you guys got it a minute ago. Uh, Craig's in my, in my workshop. So you work for Sofa's Direct. So, Sofa Works. It sounds like a good place to work. Are you recruiting? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not recruiting. All right. Um, what does it do? <laughs> Shall I ask somebody else? There are, there are triggers on the left and events on the right. Uh, right okay. Yeah, there are triggers on the ends and left on the right. Buttons and lamps, yes. Okay. Let's go easy. What does this button do? Yeah, okay. So we're testing. We're testing stuff. I'm not giving you any requirements. I'm just saying, find out what the behaviors of these, are like, these things are like. Now, that's kind of extreme testing. It's extreme this side testing. Can't work out left and right when I'm on stage. It's extreme this side testing. It's extreme, I am just going to explore the deliverable and find out what it does. It's important to be able to do that as testers because you need to diagnose things. You need to find out what something does that is a surprise. You can work without requirements, say after me. We can work without requirements. Oh, fresh. Okay, um, right. Now, 
The next one, the next one, we'll go back button, clonk, four button, puzzle 22. Uh, I wrote puzzle 22 last night. Uh, and I went for easy. So it's only got one button and one light. One button and one light. Now, pause, 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 pause in your testing. Pause. What I want you to do is I want you to <coughs> gather a bit. I would like you to gather ideally into groups of three, but two will work, and for those who feel like it, one will work too. I don't care. <laughs> three will be good. And I'd like you to gather in such a way that one of you is actually doing testy stuff. Hands-on testing stuff. And the other one is helping them by making suggestions. Good suggestions, bad suggestions, irritating suggestions, rude suggestions, I don't know, but make suggestions. And I want the third person to watch. Because I want the third person to be able to tell the first two about their testing. This is a puzzle. Puzzles are dull. Testing is interesting. I really don't care much about what the puzzles do, but your response to the puzzle, that's one of the most fascinating things about testing that I know, is to see how people test. So, can you gather into groups of one, two, or three? I don't care, maybe four or five. Don't know. And I'd like some people to observe, some people to suggest, and some people to test. Those of you who don't have a device, you better be observers or suggestors. We're going to test puzzle 22. Okay, I'm going to try and draw you to a slight pause. A slight pause, not a complete pause. Do keep testing if you want to keep testing. Um, question for you. Somebody's drawn a picture. Yes. Oh, my work is done. I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Um, so, one button, one light does stuff. Um, observers. And I'll tell you what, testers, who thinks they know what it's doing? Yeah, you think it knows what it's doing? Good, lovely. Um, observers, how have you seen people testing? Two or three observers, tell me, tell the room how you've seen the people testing. Talking. Hey, people are talking, that's good. You guys were banging it as hard as you could. You guys were complaining, it's my phone and Jim's testing it like that. How are people testing? A couple of observers, people particularly of... Testing more scenarios. Big pardon? People have been suggesting more scenarios to talk about both of them today. Okay, so there are scenarios being suggested. That's good. Are people... Big pardon? Destructive means of testing, trying to break it. Trying to break it. Yeah. Okay. I wonder what break it looks like. What do you think break it looks like? Just on the Okay, fair enough. How many of you are trying to hit it as fast as possible? Go on, go on, go on. Honest, honest stuff. We're all trying to hit it as fast as possible. All right. That's fine. I expected that many of you would try and hit it as fast as possible. It might not help you. Do you know what it's doing? So, we asked the observers how people are testing. I would like somebody who is a suggester particularly in a group that thinks they know what it, how it's working, to give me the best suggestion without actually revealing what it does. Yes, sir. What's your best suggestion? So, uh, my suggestion will be if you hold down the button, it goes... This thing, have you tried it since that suggestion? Try it out. Is that what you got? Is that what you got? Seriously? Yeah. Nodding up and down? Yeah, good. Sorry, I was, I was looking for somebody in, and everybody was looking at their phone going, no, no, not really. Good, I'm glad. I'm glad. So this guy, did you have it? Because you, you know? Oh no. I don't want the answer to come out before most of the room has got it. So the trick here is coaching. I'd like you to coach the room with your suggestions, just in the same way you're coaching all the testers that you're working with. Coach the room with your suggestions. If you start to know what it does, stand up, walk into the room. If somebody wants a suggestion, if they're looking a bit lost, then suggest. Sir, it's very good. That's a, that was a really good thing. Thank you very much. 
if you know next time, and you do, and if it's that simple, you really do know, stand up, go talk to other people. I'll recognize when, you know, whoever comes first, I'll, okay, yeah, he, he was up first, and then I'm, I'll ask him. Sometimes you're going to go and suggest what's true, and then you're going to need to sit down again because you see somebody refuting your hypothesis. Yes, it's going to happen. So, suggestors, testers, observers, do stand up when you think you know what it does and go and help other people. The trick is not to be first. The trick is to help everybody understand. Is that good? All right. So, that was puzzle 22. That was the simplest puzzle I've ever written. Now we've got some more. Um, Okay, what we're going to do then is uh, I'm, I'm going to get us all to do puzzle 15 and then we're going to split into two groups to do puzzle 11, 11 and 17. Does that make sense? Because 15 should take between 10 and, well, 5 and 10 minutes depending on how we go. So let's all test puzzle 15, same format, three people if you can, tester, observer, suggester. I'm going to ask observers what they're observing and suggesters what they're suggesting. <laughs> I think you have a hypothesis that deserves further exploration with clarity. Okay, so you, it's all about sequences is, is, is a good place to start. Clarify your hypothesis and see where you go. Um, you might want to make suggestions to them. You can make suggestions to each other because that will really help you get there fast. Is it not doing what you expected? No. <laughs> <laughs> but one person stood up to help other people and he did have the right answer and then he went to the loo instead. <laughs> If you think you know, stand up, tell somebody else, or give somebody else a good, clear suggestion that doesn't give them the answer. If you think you know, go help. So, observers, who is still consciously in an observing role? <laughs> Man at the back, thank goodness. How, observers, because Craig, uh, oh God, Craig? Yeah. Thank goodness, because the names just disappeared. I'm I'm at the back. How are you seeing people testing? What are you seeing them doing with their testing? Uh, there was a lot of random exploration initially. Yeah. And then an attempt to rationalize into a set of mm -hmm. So one of the ways you start off with almost any handheld device is button mashing. Which is, you know, yeah, that's good. You mash the buttons and information goes into your head and your head, which is cleverer than you are most of the time, gives you an idea. Man at the back, you're still observing. Right. <laughs> what kind of things are you seeing? What kind of testing are you seeing going on? Trying to find patterns. Yeah, okay, there's pattern finding. I'm going to give you a suggestion or two for yourselves. Are, do the four buttons in the middle behave basically identically, do you think? No, okay. Depends on an condition. Okay. So that hypothesis says, depends on condition what I've done before. There is history in this machine. Okay. So the question for me then, as a meta suggester, is how much history matters? Sometimes history matters, sometimes state matters. Sometimes these two confuse you because you need history to get to a state. How are you testing to see whether this is history or whether it is state that you're dealing with here? Can you test for that? Can you look for it? Um, so, anybody else observing? What else? Is, has anybody seen a bit of genius testing? <laughs> okay. I've heard some good hypotheses. I've heard a hypothesis that it takes three lights, these guys over here. And I said, does it? And they went, no, it takes two. <laughs> so what did I say then? Does it? It's not difficult to be a suggester. And you guys press buttons and say, yes, it does. So hang on. <laughs> because when you have a suggestion from outside, you get a little twitch. And you think, oh. Oh, do they know something I don't? And it kind of ups your observation a little bit. It's very good to have somebody suggesting things to you. I think that we should possibly, as testers, have little icons on our desktop that occasionally suggest things to us. Uh, I have a website 
that was called What the Fuck Should I Test Next? But when I started, you know, because it's part of that What the Fuck Should I meme, and I got very irritated with the code because the code was just swearing all the time. So it's, it's now at what should I test next.com. It's very nice to have something make little suggestions, even if it's inanimate, even if it's boring. So the suggestions are really important here, so are the observers. Right, now. <sighs> Shall I ask you for a hypothesis? I can describe this in a couple of very short sentences. You're not yet there. So remember that your hypothesis is going to be a short sentence. You might need a few long sentences to get there. It's a good long sentence to start with. Um, it's not that complicated. And I'm not here to make you feel stupid. You're actually too clever for these puzzles. We are humans. We are too clever for simple things. So we're looking at simple things. We're going, there must be more to it than that. Would you agree, man who got the answer? It's that easy, isn't it? It, it takes about maybe five or six sentences rather than just a couple of sentences. You explained it to me in two. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All Let right. me... So, somebody suggests to me what I should test. A button. A button. Ta-da! I press that button. Question one. Does the button undo itself? In this case. In this case, yes. But it's worth remembering that there is a case in which it undoes itself. Okay. Do the other buttons work like that? Well, yes, they do, sir. Does that one undo itself? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Does that one undo itself? Yeah, there we are. Okay, so we know what they do. <coughs> they toggle the opposite corner. Any more suggestions for me? Turn one of them on. Turn one of them on. Hello. And then click the one on that. Have we seen that? What's it doing? It's moving it. Okay. So if I was to turn that one on and then press that one, man, the very beautiful jumper, it'll go round a bit. What am I doing that's different from what, you, from what you've done? Apart from knowing the answer. Because <laughs> I wrote them. You're giving coaching. Giving a little bit of coaching. Be systematic. Maybe. I hope I'm being simple. I hope I'm being simple. So I checked all the buttons to see, turns it on, turns it off, turns it on, turns it off, turns it on. All four of them do that. And then I had the fine suggestion from the man in the jumper to say, turn the light on and press the button next to it. And he uttered the magic words, it goes round. Okay. Now, the moment, I'm sorry to say, that I do this kind of thing, and that sort of stuff happens, and you go, what's happening now? Because, <laughs> what, 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 what's going to happen if I press that one? Rotate. It'll rotate. Why will it rotate? Because the one closest to it on the corner is already lit. Yep. But the problem is that as humans, we have a funny thing in our head. We, let's press that. Can you see it has rotated if you're looking for it to rotate? You need the hypothesis sometimes before you see it. So we need to develop hypothesis after hypothesis and try them out and throw them away. Because it affects how we observe. Once you see that happening, so how do I keep this rotating? I can press this one. Yay! I can press that one. Yay! I can press this one. Yay! Do you know what it's, all, do you know what it's doing now, everybody? Yes. The buttons either turn on the opposite one or spin the whole lot. That's it. And that was pretty much yours. It wasn't four sentences. It was, it was good. Um, somebody also who went to the loo. Somebody went to the loo. Uh, yeah, so you told me it was right as well. You were ages before anybody else. So what you need to solve this is a full bladder. <laughs> <laughs> now then, one more. One more. We've got two more to try. Um, how many of you know Richard Bradshaw? So Richard Bradshaw, friendly tester. He's a really good tester. He tried puzzle 11 out and it took an entire party, then his flight home, to get it right. Puzzle 17, on the other hand, I've only seen two people do successfully. 
Will you be the first? I suspect you will, because working in a group is good. Now what I want to do is I want to draw a line down the room, like that. Sorry, madam. Um, you're not on, you know, I'm just kind of wending it between the shoulders there. Now, what I'd like you to do is to work in two groups. And you guys work on puzzle 11 and you guys work on puzzle 17. And what I want you to do is to talk to each other all the time. Not just stay in your little groups of three. Talk to each other all the time. Make suggestions. Shout stuff out at each other. When you hear something shouted out, try it out for yourselves. I want you to be hypothesis generating machines. Do you understand? Oh my goodness me. I want you to be hypothesis generating machines. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. It's good that voice, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't done that before. Lovely. All right. So, uh, your puzzle 11, your puzzle 17. Let's work. And I was going to say let's work until 8 o'clock. It's two minutes to 8. Let's work until 5 past 8 and see where we get to. I want loud hypotheses coming out. Oh, oh, oh. Before you start, before you start, I want to tell you one thing. Who in the room is recruiting? <laughs> Here's the thing, I know that recruiters are using these as testing puzzles in <coughs> recruitment. They're in use all over the world by people giving testers jobs. First one through the door, have you seen the puzzles before? Oh no, 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 not that one. I've seen all the other ones. That gets your brownie points. Second one, if you know what it does, even better. So this is your ticket to a long future in testing. <laughs> now you can split up and test. Thank you. <laughs> need to draw your attention back towards not testing for a bit. Because I went over and I, I asked Stu and Claire and I said, when should I finish up? And they said, about now. So we're finishing up round about now. I've heard some good hypotheses. This puzzle, puzzle 11, seems to be catching people in terms of sequences. Over here, there is much interest in running things at the same time to see if it's genuinely random. Both of these are completely deterministic. Now, I'm going to do something that is particularly bad form. I'm not going to tell you the answers. <laughs> I will tell you the answers very happily if you come and have a chat with me. But I need to finish off because apparently we've got to finish. There's lightning talks, there's stuff. I want to tell you two things. And this is a commercial because I can't pay my mortgage. <laughs> so. Um, I'm going to run a workshop in Manchester, probably next April. I don't know the dates yet. There's a link. Obviously, don't click that. It's a screen, but you know. <laughs> You've all got the page. You know where the link is. Um, that's the first thing. It's going to be on exploratory testing. We won't use puzzles. We're going to use exercises that are proper software in some ways. Um, is it going all right? Goes on, guys, in my workshop. Is yeah, it interesting? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're kind of, yeah that's all right. So um, that'll happen next spring. I think it's good. This is kind of what I do. Uh, sometimes I teach, and I teach people by making them test software. You've had puzzles in my workshops. We test real stuff and puzzles. So um, is that me? I'm done. Thank you very much. It's been entertaining.